His wife, Parvati, using her tantric power, she made the shape of a baby and breathed life into it. And Shiva lands up from somewhere. With a flick of his sword, he took off the boy's head. He has to bring this boy back to life. So he looked around, a boneless limbs they had, and they spoke in a language which nobody could decipher. Because he got a head which was not human, he was supremely brilliant. So Manasarovar is uh, significant because it is culturally significant because uh, whenever Shiva is a bit of a vagabond householder, he goes away. So his wife, Parvati, <coughs> instead of staying in Kailash, she comes on here because that's all iced up. She comes down here, at least there's cold water. So she lives here largely. So more time was spent here than there. So many things happened here. One of the things that happened was Ganapati was born here. So he's not elephant-headed, he's Ganapati. Gana means the Ganas who were Shiva's companions. Generally, they are described as distorted and demented human beings or beings, not human beings. They did not have human form, they had strange forms. And they had limbs which did not have bones, a boneless limbs they had. And they spoke in a language which nobody could decipher. They spoke like cacophony. And they seemed to be always inebriated or at least they behaved like that. So they were called ganas and they were the permanent companions of Shiva all the time with him. Others came and went, but they were always there. So, when uh, one of these outings that Shiva went, he went away twelve years. There are many cultural and scientific reasons we gave for as to why he went away for twelve years because largely whenever he went, he went away for twelve years. So once he went away and after eleven, twelve years, he came back. Parvati sitting here on the banks of this lake, I want you to imagine, you are the just only woman sitting on the banks of Manasarovar Lake, nothing here. She wants to have a baby. She is unable to have a baby because Shiva's seed is not human. So, it's clear that she cannot have a baby with him. But when she's alone, when she's with him, she's fine. When he's gone for long periods, her maternal instincts took over. She wants to have a baby. So one day, she smeared herself with sandal paste head to toe, waited for a period of time, then slowly peeled off all the sandal paste. When you do this, a certain amount of your skin or your cells will come away. Making use of this, using her tantric power, she made the shape of a baby and breathed life into it. A nice little boy came and she was very happy in the company of this boy and he grew up, grew up, just the two of them, nobody. And Shiva lands up from somewhere, nobody knows where he goes. Him and his friends land up, full, all inebriated and happy, come to see his wife. <laughs> He's that kind. And Parvati wants to have bath. So she set up a small barrier and asked the boy to watch out that nobody comes this way. So the boy took this duty as a very… he's very proud to guard his mother. So with a spear in his hand, he's walking up and down. He's looking for trouble. He wants to. Somebody should come now and he must fend them off. He desperately wants to do something for his mother. He's in that state. And Shiva and his friends landed up. So he wants to see his wife, he's coming that way. And the boy stopped him and questioned him, who are you? Shiva thought, oh, you're asking me who are you? With a flick of his 
sword, he took off the boy's head and went to see Parvati. He very happy to see his wife after twelve years, but the wife saw blood on his sword and she screamed. And he got the works. <laughs> then he doesn't know what to do. He thought after twelve years he'll get a great welcome. <laughs> Here she is freaking on him. She said, you have to bring him back to life. He said, that's not possible, it's… he's decapitated, he's finished. I don't care what has happened, I want him back to life. Now if he wants to have his wife, he has to bring this boy back to life. So he looked around, <laughs> the gunners, they were all there kiki 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 like this. So he looked around and the leader of the gunners, he asked him what? He said, okay. So he lopped off his head and put it on the boy's head, first head transplant. So, now the boy had human body and a Ghana's head, the two chief of the Ghana's head and he had a limb which was boneless, boneless limb. So he became a Ghanapati, the chief of the Ghana's. Somewhere down the line, artists from Sivakasi in Tamil Nadu, because they had never seen a Ghana but the place was full of elephants, a boneless limb means they could not imagine beyond an elephant. So they slowly made that into an elephant. Whatever they do, even today everybody calls it only Ganapati. Nobody calls him Gajapati, okay? Some people have t started writing songs these days calling him Gajapati, but it doesn't stick. Ganesh, Ganapati is what sticks because he is Ganesh, he is Ganapati. He is the king or the leader or the chief of Ghanas. Because he got a head which was not human, he was supremely brilliant. Because of this extreme sense of intelligence, he did not allow anything to be an obstacle in his life. Every obstacle in life can be cleared if you have the needed intelligence, isn't it? So this is what he proved. So we called him Vigneshwara, he removed all the Vignas because his intelligence is of that level. If you do not know about writing his scriptures, he told uh, Vyasa, your dictation should be non-stop. If you stop, I'm going to drop the pen and go away because I'll get bored with you. This is the level of intelligence. Ganesh Chaturthi means not to boost your belly, but to boost your brain because he's known for his brain, not for his belly. But today, to our children we have said, we have made it clear, he is known for his big belly, not for his big brain. He was essentially known for his big brain. So, Ganesh Chaturthi should be about boosting the brain, not the belly, isn't it? <laughs>